Hi, I'm Jill, Chief Safety Officer with Vivid Learning Systems. I'm a former OSHA inspector and I'm here to help you identify and correct workplace hazards. For this series, we are at the beautiful Monterey Bay Aquarium to show you that no matter where you work, safety is for everyone. How many confined spaces in your work environment? First, let's talk about what a confined space is. A confined space is an area that an employee can enter with either all or part of their body, but it's not intended for continuous human occupancy, and it has limited means for entry and exit. Some confined spaces can include things like tanks, vessels, silos, storage bins, hoppers, vaults, pits like the one that I'm standing next to now, sewers, tunnels, ductwork, and even equipment housing. Once you determine if you have confined spaces, you need to determine if they are considered permit-required spaces. A permit-required confined space has one or more of the following characteristics. It contains or has the potential to contain a hazardous atmosphere. It contains material that has the potential to engulf an entrant, like water or grain or sand has walls that converge inward or floors that slope downward and taper into a smaller area which could trap or asphyxiate a person. And finally, contains other safety or health hazards such as unguarded machinery, exposed live wires, or heat stress. Joining me at this confined space at the Monterey Bay Aquarium is the safety manager, Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah, when we look at confined spaces, you know, there's a couple different ways to think about it. We have confined space rescue, and we have the actual permit required confined space. Can you talk about the difference between those two and what it means to people that are going to be entering them? Sure, so we've set up a lot of different things here for you to look at, and it's, it's kind of key to recognize that some of these things are specifically for the entry, and some of them are specifically for the rescue. So for instance, this backboard to my right is a really handy tool for actually pulling someone out of a hole. We're not going to see spine somebody or anything like that, but we use it as a, to as a tool, almost like a shoehorn, to pull somebody out of a hole so they don't injure themselves when we're removing them. So that would be an entry rescue scenario. So that means that we would have to, um, someone would be working down in the pit. If something happened, we got a call on the radio, we would have to initiate a rescue response. So we would have rescue uh, personnel who are trained in confined space entry, don a fall protection harness as well, and go down, position an individual get them in the appropriate uh, position so that we could safely lift them with this retrieval device. So this is part of the rescue equipment. We have the retrieval device that also has fall protection built into it. So those are all part of a rescue type system. Sure, so we want to plan for the worst to happen, hope that it doesn't, and we don't want to have to go scrambling for all this equipment first. So the goal is to have all of this in place and ready to go should you need to right, use it. Right, right. It's really important to have it when you need it because you don't have time to go get it later. Right. All right. Now for the entry procedures. So what what sort of equipment do we have here just to be able to get into, um, right. into so, a space? So I mentioned, first of all, the tripod itself. It's a rescue device, but it also serves as fall protection. It's dual purpose. So if we were going to enter this pit, say I was going in and you were the attendant, you were gonna watch the space, we'd, I'd put the fall protection harness on, I would hook in, and then I would actually be able to safely climb down the ladder. Now, depending on the work I was doing, I may unhook. And if I unhook, that would make this a rescue entry in a scenario where you had to come get me. Say I had a heart attack or something like that, you'd have to send someone in to come get me and they'd have to hook me up. If I didn't unhook, then it could be a non-entry rescue. You could actually just reel me in. With the, with the winch. With the winch, right. Some of the other things that we've got here is a, a blower. You can see that's to help clear out any air contaminants. That could be uh, methane, it could be H2S. Think of a wastewater plant or something like that. Uh, or it could just be insufficient oxygen. So we run a blower uh, to keep the air nice and clean and fresh. And then if you look down at my feet actually, we have a continuous gas monitor. So we'll monitor at different areas in the pit. That'll tell us how much oxygen is available. Uh, you need to monitor this continuously so in the event that something changes in the atmosphere. Say you were welding down there and there was an open flame and you started to consume oxygen, you'd want to be able to tell. So this would tell us that immediately and then we could initiate a rescue and get the person out of the hole safely. Um, other than that, 
If you can set these types of things up, have them on site, you're definitely going to have a safe entry. Sure, and so if, you, if you've identified your rescue system and the hazards that we're talking about and you have the process in place, how are you going to remember it all? And maybe that's what you want to talk about. Right, right. So everyone should have a solid confined space permit. Even if it's a non-permit situation, using the permit will help you remember all of these details. And what's great about it is it lays out the roles and responsibilities. There's supervisors, there's attendants, there's entrance themselves. Everyone has a role, even the rescue team. And what's great about a permit is it gives you a plan. You can draw a picture on the back of the space. You can tell where you're going to monitor. And then if something does go wrong, you always have a record of what you did right. And you can go back and review maybe what your opportunities were as well. Right. That, this is a very important piece. And as a, as a former OSHA investigator, when I would do my inspections and I would ask to see um, the written permits, and if I would see uh, a lines written in these that someone wasn't actively, actively using the form and they were just making a big line through everything, it was an indication to me that they weren't actually participating and noting everything and taking their time to do it. Maybe they were just checking a box to say that they had done it on paper, which really puts people at risk. Um, not to really be thinking about the hazards that they could be exposed to on that particular day. Jeremiah, thank you so much for sharing all of this valuable information with us. This is really impressive, the way that, the way that you handle safety here at the aquarium. Right, right, and I would say the confined space procedure really does save lives. Thank you. I hope you gained a safety skill today. If you know someone who needs this, go ahead and pass it on. Safety is everyone's business.